Welcome everyone to CLAW TV. As of Sunday, the 25th of May, it is clear the Ukrainian people elected Petro Poroshenko for president. It was a fantastic election, summarized Swiss National Parliament member Andreas Gross. Already on Saturday, before the elections, Gross announced on Swiss radio SRF1. This time the Ukrainians are going to experience the most free and fair presidential elections since their independence in 1991. Also international election observers classified the presidential elections as lawful, stating, for the most part this election has corresponded to democratic standards. But was this election really the most free and fair one ever taking place in Ukraine? A very interesting question we would like to take a look at and analyze today here on CLAW TV. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov commented, the pre-election campaign was not without problems. Presidential candidates were intimidated, beaten and even threatened with death. An airplane with which one of the candidates was traveling was not allowed to move on. Another candidate withdrew his candidacy when the reprisals began, in other words, when he was put under pressure in order to prevent his candidature in the elections. In addition to this, candidates' houses were set on fire. Among the 21 candidates who were put on the electoral list, not one was prepared to address the demands of the eastern regions in his election program. Oleg Tsayov, who was considered a representative of the interests of the eastern Russian-speaking part of the population, had withdrawn his candidacy one month before. Was the public debate really better than ever before, as the SRF Swiss radio presenter stated? Tsayov declared that he relinquished his candidacy because he was not allowed to take part in televised debates. Ukrainian radicals had beaten him up after he took part in a broadcast previously at a local television channel. Is it really true that nobody has complained of drawbacks, as SRF reported? Prior to the elections, there was a remarkable pessimism among citizens on the streets. Many feared dying due to possible gunfights. People complained that since it had already been determined who would be the president, they wouldn't take the risk to go and vote. These are certainly not free elections. Had there really never been so few problems at elections in Ukraine, as Swiss Parliament member Mr. Gross stated on SRF1? The fact that 5 million of the 41 million eligible voters couldn't vote due to the unrest in the east of the country, I quote, doesn't cast doubt on the legitimacy of the election, commented Mr. Gross. Further, the amount of those who were disturbed is too small. The most important thing is to get a legitimate president. According to this, 12% of voters are totally unimportant to this Swiss National Parliament member. But according to the Constitution, elections are illegal when acts of war are taking place in the country during the elections. In Lugansk and other cities, a state of war was proclaimed on Thursday before the election. Shops were closed and public transportation was shut down. The Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs has repeatedly strongly emphasized to the West that it is absurd to hope for legitimacy in the presidential election during conditions of civil war in Ukraine. It is necessary to enforce a ceasefire and a lay down of arms beforehand. But this was not done. Some experts on the Ukraine suppose that the approximately 3,000 election observers were only appointed in order to help prevent possible awkward moments, referring here to the ongoing acts of war, and to legitimate the elections in the eyes of the Western public. Ladies and gentlemen, judge yourselves if the Ukrainian presidential election should be spoken of as a legitimate, free and fair election or not. We here at CLAW TV want to present an as uncensored and comprehensive picture of the facts as possible. A good evening for you and until tomorrow, goodbye.